Welcome to Projects for All. My name's Jake. <laughs> no? <laughs> you do it. I do it all the time. <laughs> my name's not Jake. Welcome to Projects for All. My name's Mike. And today, today, Apier has sent down here a smart sprinkler system for me to show you guys. This is a fully automated 40 foot range sprinkler system. And I'm going to set it up right now. This video is not going to come out for about a month, so we're going to get some serious time to check this thing out, and let's do it. 15-minute DIY installation, personalized irrigation schedule, customizable lawn map, and precision irrigation. Design awards. This is pretty freaking cool looking, I'm going to be honest with you. Perfect for lawns of the following shapes. <laughs> That's pretty much all the shapes. So why are we doing this outside today? Well, I got a laser engraver doing some work and it's pretty smoky in the garage. Also, it's freaking nice outside. Got a quick start guide right on the back. And we'll use this. We're gonna set up the app. Got our owner's manual, it was probably in there, but I already took it out and had a look. Customer support, phone numbers. This thing is not small. It is, <laughs> it's not even in the shot anymore. There's our smart irrigation system. Not small at all. It's got a pressure gauge on the top. Head that rotates. Reminds me of an ionic breeze. <laughs> if you remember that, I'm starting to date myself. You got your water connection and power on the back. You got some hardware. We got this so we can stick this in the ground. So if we have to remove it to cut the grass, we can find its exact location again after it's all set up. We got some ground stakes. We got some plastic water adapters. We'll have a look. I don't know if we're going to need any of that stuff. And they actually gave us a little ratchet, which is kind of cool. I assume it's for these. Yeah, I'm sure. A little reversible ratchet. And here we got our power cord. Waterproof it looks to be. Got O-rings inside there. We're going to need that because it's going to be outside, obviously. And a power brick. All right, I decided to start, I'm going to put it up here. We'll get some initial testing and I might bring it out in the yard, but my seven-year-old likes to ride his bike out there. He gets tangled up in the wires and the hose. I'd rather get some baseline usage out of this before it gets destroyed. We're going to set it here. I'm going to screw it down. I kind of leveled it out with the mulch a little bit. So this is 39 feet. There's, there's our sprinkler. A lot of grass to cover, actually. It was nice of them to include this, but I'm just gonna use this. Our box came with some quick connectors, a couple different sizes. These are plastic. I'm gonna not use these. I'm just gonna screw it directly to my garden hose, and I think that'll be fine for me. It did come with this check valve, which it really doesn't mention. It does show you installing it, and it has obviously a little filter in it, which is probably good. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. But otherwise, it's just connected directly to the hose. Once you plug this in, this light will be flashing. You can go on Aper Zap and pair it. I did that in the house earlier. So there it is. Enter. Upgrade reminder. Updates reminder. Do that. Check for updates. New version found. Download and update. All right, we're flashing there, it's updating. Give that a minute. Fully updated. Please create a map for irrigation first. To ensure the accuracy of irrigation, please create a map under windless weather conditions. Well, that's today. Setting contour points remotely. Adjust the water jet distance using the forward and backward buttons on the remote. Tap X to create a new contour point. You may continue to create more points via remote control. Saving the irrigation map. Turn on the water supply to start mapping. Well, let's do that. So pressing up here. And it's building pressure. Hey. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
There we go. Got the air out of the lines. We'll back it up a little bit. So I'm pressing, I'm pressing back here and it's dropping pressure and it's getting closer, closer to the edge of the grass there. I hope you can see that. Point added successfully. You may select closure point. So we're going to go to the left and we're going to have to increase pressure because now it's hitting the sidewalk. There we go. Now it's hitting over there and I'm going to hit plus again. And then we'll go to the right. Oh, too far, too far. <laughs> and we'll back it up. And now it's so oh, too far. So now we'll get it where it's hitting the grass over here, but it's not hitting the sidewalk. So it's hitting right there. Some crazy precision. We'll hit plus again. I'm gonna hit another spot there. We'll shut the garage door. It's coming all the way out here, no problem. We'll go there. And then let's bring it to the other side of the tree over here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to trim these branches. If it wasn't hitting the branches, it would be hitting almost 40 feet, which is where that thing is. That is crazy powerful. You like this thing? It's hitting all the way out here. That's impressive. Like one step and I'm in the water. And that is, see if I can stretch it out more. That is maximum. So yeah, I would say 39 feet is pretty accurate. So we'll hit a waypoint here and then we'll bring it over. It's hitting the light up there. And obviously we don't want it to hit the porch. So I'll move it over. So it's shooting over the porch there. <laughs> and it's in the neighbor's yard a little, so we'll back it up just a little bit. And we'll hit a waypoint there. And then I'm going to hit check mark. <laughs> and there we go. This thing's pretty incredible, actually. I'm impressed so far. Let's see. So the next step is to set a schedule. We have Sunday through Saturday. We're going to do in the morning. AM schedule. Let's go 7 AM. I'm going to do 7 AM set to repeat weekly. Yes. Save. Sunday, 7 a.m. I'm going to set that for every, for now, every day. We're going to put some grass seed down because we got some serious bald spots going and it looks pretty bad. So I'm going to put some grass seed down and this thing hopefully is going to help me grow some grass here. The worst part is the front part of the lawn where this is going to hit. Although... Putting it in the middle of the lawn and running it from there is probably what I'll end up doing in a week, couple weeks, but I'll check back in with you on that. So we're gonna be 7 a.m. every day of the week. Is that too much? Don't know, we'll find out. Next irrigation schedule tomorrow, Monday. I can skip it, it would appear. If I press this, I get into my schedule and change it. Irrigation depth. Select the desired irrigation water consumption. Point 0.1 inch, quarter inch, half inch. We'll leave it at point 0.1 since we're gonna do it every day. We can edit our map, map management, weather settings, weather sensing, rainfall sensing, we can turn on and off. Enable this function to allow the rain sensor to detect rainfall. We'll do that. So we don't want it to water if it's raining out. And remote irrigation. Oh, look, I can just spray it wherever I want. That's cool. 
let's go to remote irrigation and we'll just press forward until we get some water. Takes a few seconds. We can just hit one spot if we want. If we exit out of that and whoop, right back to where it was. I have it all the way out there now. So it should hit 40 feet out to the back, all the way around, along here, along my property there without getting the concrete too much, and it'll go around the tree and along the garage there. We'll hit the app. There's our new map that I made for the new position here. And we'll hit cool down. And what that's gonna do, see it started right here. I have it set to hit right here and then go along the garage. I set it to mostly avoid the robot because if the robot's wet, the robot will think it's raining and will not work. <laughs> so it's going to come along here to about 40 feet out, which is about where I'm standing right now. And then it'll sweep across the lawn here. It'll get that dead spot where the bouncy house was on the 4th of July. Never mind the baseball noises. There's always baseball noises back here. Honestly, I kind of like it. So it's hitting right there. I hope you guys can see it. It's going to do this twice. It'll go all the way around the yard, back to the tree here, and then all the way back. So it's going to go, it went to the corner here where the hydrangeas are. And notice I'm standing right next to it, but I'm not getting wet because it's really really precise where it hits it's going to follow the yard i did not set it to avoid the table because honestly the table really shouldn't be here so it's going to hit the table get that far corner in my yard right there and then it's going to pull back and not get me too wet here standing here Little splash, but not much water hitting the concrete. Right up against this deck that should not be on the ground that I did not build. And then it's coming along here. Coming up a little short now. I don't know, I might have to adjust the waypoints to get back up in that corner. But actually, I think when it came back, it was stretched out. So let's see here when it comes back. Not getting the Harley wet, but getting the grass right to the edge there. Just barely, look at that. Isn't that? I think that's minimum right there, that little trickle. It's gonna come back. Yeah, so it's gonna get all the way to the end on the sweep back. So it did like kind of the interior part here, and now it's doing right along the sidewalk. Water pressure on the gauge shows about 11 PSI. I don't know how accurate that is to be honest with you. So what do you guys think? Is it worth it for the price? If you have some expensive landscaping or maybe a large garden that you want to water every day, I could see it making sense. It does a great job out here from edge to edge and 80 feet front to back is a pretty wide area and you have complete control over it. You can edit the map whenever you want, change things, pretty cool. I do kind of wish it had a kid mode where you can manually override it and just turn it on and that's what i do for him but it'd be cool if it did something fun that the kids would enjoy but you know it is what it is and they could always add something in the app you never know thank you so much for watching let me know what you guys think in the comments and i'll see you in the next one